Hey guys, welcome to the first programming video, but before starting with the video, you might think you need to know calculus, you need to know mathematics, statistics, tons of information to learn programming, but no. In order to watch this video and in order to understand a realistic life of a software engineer or how a real software engineer codes, you don't need any information at all. All you need to know is how to use a basic computer. So that's it. So through this video, I have tried my best to show you the real life of a software engineer, how we code, how we are able to code much faster as compared to any beginner programmer so that you can code faster as well. So through this video, you will be able to learn the tools, technologies, a real software engineer uses so that you are able to use those technologies as well. If you don't use technologies in your life, if you're not using those tools and technologies as a student, whether you're a college student or not, no matter what you're doing, you can definitely use these technologies with this knowledge you can become a software engineer very very easily so without any further ado let's get started so before we start programming i really want to share an example of a very hardworking student so his name is hussein mustafa so he started programming in his high school he learned everything on his own he didn't have the uh, right resources in his school but learned things on his own published apps on both android and ios got around 30000 plus downloads and then he even got internships in good firms and also he started his own udemy course for Flutter. So Flutter say aap kya kar sakte ho? you can make apps for both Android and iOS in one project or you can say one programming language. So in Flutter we use the programming language called Dart. So he made this complete course. And what's special about this course is that he's going to make you from zero to hero because he's going to give you the basic knowledge in Dart and also show you how to make real world applications such as Netflix app or Poke text app games etc so he's going to add more into it and he already has a lot of students enrolled so you can definitely check out with the link in the description below and it's going to cost you 360 rupees in india or 10 dollars in us and now we can finally start programming so first of all so you might think i'm going to straight away start programming but no every programmer first of all make sure that his or her work is being saved with the help of version control i'm going to give version control ki simple se example deta hu so let's say that you're using google maps and you turn on google services google location services then google knows everything about you which place you visited what time you exited which place you uh, stayed for how much time similarly version control keeps track of which files you added which files you deleted which files you modified so that's why it's very important so we, we save code in file so it's pretty much same so now i'm going to use github desktop for version control so it is same as git it's like a version control it keeps track of your files but what different is that it, it will show you buttons it is it has the gui it has like buttons rather than command line command line is difficult to learn that's why i'm going to be using this application which is much easier so the first thing i'm going to do is create a repo and i can call it first python because we're going to be using python it is the easiest one of the easiest language to learn and it will not expose you to a lot of code because I remember when I started programming from Java se start ki thi na, it exposed me to a ton of code I was scared that what's going on I mean, there is like too much information too much things to learn in your first program itself so that was difficult so now as I've created the repo in GitHub Desktop so it's going to create a folder called first python that will be in documents folder so uh, i just opened this folder and you can see the path it's in documents github and first python so github desktop se hua kya? that it will keep track of this entire folder so you can put things into it and it will know automatically that you modified this file you deleted this file so what i'm going to do next is create a python project so i'm going to go back to pycharm then new project let's save it directly in the github desktop folder so i'm going to name it first python and, and all the code is going to go straight away to this folder which we created using github desktop so create yes so there we go we have our first python project created so now all i need to do is right click new python file i'll call it first program and we have this file and we can track all these files so it's asking do you want to track all these files and i'm going to say yes and now whatever i will write now will be tracked always and first of all i'm gonna i'm gonna link everything so i'm using pycharm github desktop python i'm gonna leave the link of everything so that you can download easily as well and i'm gonna configure my interpreter so i have python 3.6 installed so i'm gonna use it okay and now whatever i'm typing here will be tracked always and now if you check again the folder that we created with github desktop shows this program so it is actually created and now what we can do is we can save our changes so i'm gonna go to github desktop 
and then say version one. So it's like version control, version one, two, three. So this is version one and then commit. And I'm not gonna publish it right now. So publish means uploading the files to GitHub website. So you have to create an account for that. And now let's get back to the program. So we finally have a project ready and we are using an IDE rather than a text editor. So you must have used text editors like Notepad or Sublime. And IDE is much better because it gives you controls. You can see these controls. And on the other hand, text editor just has a place to write text or code and now to be a faster programmer you really need to know some shortcuts in IDE so let let me delete these two lines so the moment I deleted these two lines you will see the change of color so this change from white to blue or green and this is part of version control and it's telling me that this file has been changed and now an example of shortcut could be let's say I want to print hello world and then I will do dot then print and then tab so it prints and put it puts parentheses and everything automatically i can just do right click run or i can tap on this play button and i will see hello world here so it's very simple and i want to show you a lot of features in this id which are not present in other ids so other example could be so now first of all let me show you the version control feature in this id so this is here undo button so i can click on it it tells me which files i have modified so we'll double tap on this file this tells me that this file used to look like this but now it is this so it is very very convenient i can just tap on this and will restore the changes i can do command z or control z and it will bring it back and now what we can do is we can use version control again and push it so we can call it version 2 and commit so now let me add more lines let's say i want to add let's say x equals 3 and then print x and then i will do uh, run and also I will go back to this undo button and I will be able to see that this line, this block has been added and I can restore it once again. So it is very, very convenient. And other features are local history. So this was part of Git history because this is a GitHub project as, as we created in the beginning. And now this is local history part of PyCharm. So with the help of this, you can see local history of this machine. It is also connected to GitHub, but if you don't have version control, it can be helpful. So I remember back then when I didn't know about GitHub, this used to be very helpful. And now let's move on with other shortcuts you really need to know. Those include Alt Enter. So let me give you an example. Let's say that you want to round a number. Let's say you want to do math dot round and then parentheses let's say you want to do round say 4.5 and you will see that this is red so you should click on it you will be able to see that this is telling you that there's an error so this is a line error you can say this is compile time error because this is the error when you can see when you were writing the code not run time error so you should be able to click on it and then do alt enter and it will import for you automatically rather than typing it manually so this is also very very helpful and other than this typing speed is also important but i think you should aim for accuracy than the speed because if you are typing correctly and using less backspace then you will be much faster as well another shortcut could be in making the main method so main plus tab equals to main method. So now moving on with the next challenge a programmer faces is getting errors. So kafi bachin, many students get scared when they see tons of errors, red lines. So karna ke next, like they usually call their friends or experts, can you please help me? But I'm gonna show you the easier way to fix all the errors. So let's say a simple example of an error could be division. So x equals to one and y equals to three. And I'm gonna divide. So result equals to x divided by y and then i'm gonna print result and then right click run and it's gonna show the result that was fine there was no error in this code but if i change y to zero then it's gonna give me an error now the solution to this error is that you should copy the error and then go to chrome and then search for this error you will find the solution immediately for 99 percent of the cases go to the solution and you can copy it but never copy without understanding what the code is doing you should always have an understanding of it so that's why this is not the right way of doing things the right way of doing things is you should google why that error happened so what i'm going to do next is i'm going to copy this line this is the heading zero division error and then i'm going to google zero division error documentation python so with the help of this i will be able to know when this error happens so that i can avoid it all the time so i will go to the documentation docs.python.org and documentation made by the programmers itself is the best because python they made python so they wrote the documentation it must be good so now i can search for the same error and here i will be able to click on this and then I can see this is the situation, this is the condition when this error arises. So you will have an understanding. So read, 
this error or read why this error happens and then go to Stack Overflow and then you can copy it if you have an understanding of why this error happened. So this is a complete easy fix to the problem. So you should always keep that in mind. So this is how we code. But now for you guys to be a better programmer, what I'm gonna recommend is go to Chrome and Google Python beginner level projects. So here you will find tons of projects and you can make apps like tic-tac-toe in any simple app, whatever you find entertaining. Just say aapko bana ke maza hai. So the goal is to have fun first. So you should enjoy and make any project of your choice. It could be Python, it could be uh, C Sharp, whatever language you're comfortable in, make some projects and then push it to GitHub and I can show you my GitHub profile. And uh, I usually, I used to be an active programmer, but I got a break, so that's why I didn't. So this is how you can see how much regular I was back then. So you can see like I used to commit four to five times in a week back then. So this is a very helpful thing to show that you are an active programmer to the interviewers whenever you're applying for jobs. You should definitely make an account and start pushing your projects. So that's the goal. So that's how we program. And now it is time for you guys to start programming immediately, make some good projects. Now, first you will make beginner level projects and then you will be able to use your creative idea to make a better project in future. So that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Thank you.